میدید I'm gonna put the transcription on. Okay. All right. So we left off last time talking about the different types of equations. Um, and we're gonna continue on here with solving these proportions. Okay, so this is all solving linear equations. Okay, so when you have a proportion, one of the things you can do is to cross multiply. Right, so notice here the y is in the bottom. And so we can multiply the y times the eight and then the seven times the 13. Okay, so that's how they got the eight Y equals seven times 13 is 91, and then divide both sides by eight. Let me just find one here with, with the variable on the top. Because I think it's kind of easier to see it this way. The reason why it's okay to do that, because again, I don't recommend just memorizing arbitrary rules. Um, one of the principles or properties we have is that multiplication property of equality where we can multiply both sides of an equation by the same thing. So notice here on the right, we have V divided by eight. So I could multiply both sides by eight. And the eights cancel. And then you can just multiply straight across on the left and notice you get 56 fifths. Right, so in general, you know, when you multiply, when you cross multiply, and you do the five times the V and then equals seven times eight. In effect, what they're doing is multiplying both sides by the eight and then also multiplying both sides by the five to cancel that five on the bottom. All right, these fives here cancel. So you get 5v equals 8 times 7, or 56. So again, with this problem, I mean, I would just multiply both sides by 8 to cancel the 8 on the bottom. Even though you can certainly cross multiply, there's really no need to here. And notice also, just a little note, it does say to round your answer to the nearest tenth. So for the 56 fifths, you can do that division either by hand or you can use a calculator. Let me pull up my calculator. So 56 divided by five is 11.2, right? The tenths place is that very first decimal place there. That's the tenths place. So when you're rounding, you always look at the next place. And if it's a five or up, you round up the place you want. Otherwise you keep it right where it is. Let's see another one. All right, so here they cross multiply. Three times V equals 10 times 13 is 130. And then divide both sides by three. And for this one to round to the nearest 10th,
You know, again, that is the tenths place. And you look at the next number, which is the three, that is not a five or higher. So you're going to leave your answer at 43.3. That's rounded to the nearest tenth. Okay. It's interesting how they leave all of this information, you know, on the problem page. <laughs> but hey, that's helpful, right? Right, what about this one? What would we round that to? Yep, just 3.5 because the next digit there is a four. Okay, you just look at that next digit. And if that digit is a five or higher, you round up, it is not, it's a four. So you keep it at 3.5. Okay. All right, so now instead of just a variable, these proportions have two terms in one of the four spots. By the way, a proportion is an equation where you have two fractions that are equal. So it's kind of good to, to know that. Um, so basically a proportion, it's of the form, one fraction equals another fraction. And any one of these spots could actually have more than one term in them, right? There are four spots, the A, the B, the C, or the D. So for these, you have, for this example, you have two terms there in the bottom. We still cross multiply, but you just wanna be careful that you're gonna put parentheses around those two terms. Because when you cross multiply, the six has to multiply both of those. Okay, so you have to put parentheses around it. So six multiplies that whole thing. And that really is that idea of grouping symbols, right? You're grouping that all together. So the whole thing is multiplying the six and then equals the seven times the five. So then you can distribute the six to both terms, subtract 24 from both sides, and then divide both sides by six. These just say to simplify your answer, not to round, okay? So simplifying gives you an exact answer you don't want to approximate or round on a calculator unless Alex specifically asks you to do that, right? Because that's going to be an approximate answer if you're rounding. This is an exact answer. You guys want to try one? Try this one.
Do you guys want to cross multiply? It doesn't matter which you put on the left and which you put on the right. Okay. So you could do it like that, or you could have the three times five on the left. When two things are equal, it doesn't matter what's on the left, what's on the right. I tend to always put the variable on the left because it's just customary to solve for the variable on the left. And then you distribute the two. And then subtract four from both sides. And then divide both sides by two. Okay, are you guys doing these also? Any reactions for me this morning? <laughs> okay, all right. Alrighty. Just check in. It can be so silent here in um, in outer space. <laughs> all right. Okay, solving formulas for a variable, and they're just different types, but these are all the same idea. <clears throat> so remember when we're solving for a variable, we're trying to get, you know, in this case, it says solve for y. So that means we want to get y equals something. Okay, so whichever variable you're solving for, you want to have by itself on one side of the equal signs. So for this one, you just subtract 20 from both sides. So the 20s cancel, the y is by itself. and y equals x minus 20. Okay, again, solve for y. So you want the y by itself. So subtract 14 from both sides. Notice there can be lots of different letters. And remember, each letter just stands for a number. So we're trying to solve for Z. We want the Z by itself. The X, the Y, and the A, even though they're letters, they operate just as if they were numbers. You know, if this were a two, you would subtract two from both sides. So we do the exact same thing as if they were numbers. So you would subtract X from both sides. And subtract Y from both sides. So those cancel and you have the Z all by itself. Okay, does that make sense? Let's see the old Alex explanation. So they just did one at a time. They subtracted the X first. 
and then they subtracted the y. Same thing. Okay. Shortcut, you do both at the same time, <laughs> which is what I did. Okay. Subtract both the x and the y. All right, so try this one here. Okay, so you want to get that R by itself. So you're going to subtract the L from both sides, or is that a one? <laughs> Might be a one. Subtract one from both sides and add Q to both sides. Yeah, I think that's the number one. Okay, and again, you could do them both at the same time. And then we can use multiplication or division also. So to solve for G, Again, we want the G by itself. So even though we have an M in front, it would be just as if we had this. Right here, you would divide both sides by the two to cancel the two. Had one job there. It's hard to draw. There we go. And then four halves or two. So here the same exact idea, the M is multiplying the G. So we wanna divide both sides by the M. Okay, and I can appreciate it might start looking a bit weird with all these letters and numbers, but as you move along, you'll probably get a little bit more used to that because there are just all kinds of formulas and things with letters and numbers in them. So again, we always just want to isolate the variable that we're being asked to solve for, and that's it. Okay. I like how Alex really emphasizes here what this means, right? That G depends on M. The value of G will, will vary and it depends on what value M has. So if you knew M was one, then you would know G is four. If you knew M were two, then G would be two, et cetera, et cetera. All right, here you're asked to solve for Y. So you guys want to try this one.
Are you guys working these? Practice is good. We want to get that y by itself. So we could divide both sides by the eight and the z. Right, so the eights cancel and the z's cancel. And the only thing you're left with on one side of the equal sign there is the y. Okay. And they show it the same way. And don't forget the Z there on the bottom. Okay, solve for M. So these are just like we did before with numbers where there were two steps. So you see that the M is multiplied by nine first, and then N is added. So we wanna undo that in reverse order. And the first thing we wanna do is subtract the N from both sides. So on the left, you have D minus N, and on the right, we have 9m. And then to get the m by itself, you can divide both sides by 9. So you have to divide the whole left hand side by 9. Okay. We'll look at how Alex shows this. We subtract the N from both sides in red there. And then they divided both sides by nine in blue. Now it is true that there are different ways you can express your answer. And again, this is where knowledge of fractions is just so important because there will be times when your answers might look a little different. Um, when you add or subtract fractions, let me write this up here. Remember, if you have the same denominator, you can add straight across on the top. And this is also true for subtraction. So we can also go the opposite direction. The A minus B over C means the first over C minus the second over C. Okay, so with this problem, you have two things being subtracted over nine. So it's the first over nine minus the second over nine. Okay, and D, you could think of that as one times D and you could bring the D, you know, 
out to the side, one ninth of D, one ninth of N. Okay. So go ahead and try this one. I'll just kind of quietly write up here how to do it. Okay, and you know, sometimes it's customary to list these letters more in alphabetical order. It doesn't matter which order we add those two on the top. And you could also, you know, split them up. Y over five plus Z over five. Okay, so for this one, we're asked to solve for X and X is inside parentheses. So notice Alex shows two ways to do it. And much like the two ways we learned how to do this when we were using numbers, <clears throat> instead of, you know, some more than one variable. So again, our goal is to get the X by itself and it's inside the parentheses. So one way you could do it is first divide both sides by the K to get rid of that factor of K on the right. Remember factors are multiplying other things. So that is K times the factor in parentheses. There are two factors on the right. Try and say that a few different ways. So divide both sides by K. And then you can remove the parentheses because you just have one factor. It's not multiplying anything else anymore. And then you can add five to both sides. Uh, 
Um, you can also express this in different ways, right? A fraction plus a whole number. You could add them so you express your answer as just a fraction. And really what they did here was to add these two, they multiplied the second term by k over k. That's a fraction that equals one, so you get the same denominator. So then you get 5k over k. Once you have the same denominator, you can add across the top. Okay, you can also always just pull the z down in front because it's z times one. So this is one way to start by getting rid of that second factor. The other way is to distribute, multiply the k times each term inside. So you get x times k minus five times k. And again, we wanna get the x by itself. So you can add five k to both sides. And then here you have x times k, so you can divide both sides by k. And again, you could either leave it like that as one fraction, or you could separate it. You know, you have the first term. Remember, terms are separated by plus sign. Right, the first term z over k plus the second term 5k over k, and the k is canceled. So you're left with just the five. All right, so try one of these. All right, how are you guys doing? If you divide both sides by M first and then subtract both sides by five. <clears throat> that.
Or if you multiplied through, distributed the M to both terms on the left, And then since you're trying to solve for B, you want to keep that BM term on the left and subtract 5M from both sides. And then divide both sides by M. And it's fine to leave your answer as a fraction like that. Okay, maybe one more. To solve for y, you could divide both sides by 9 and then add 5 to both sides. I personally think this is a little bit easier than distributing. But you could distribute the 9 and add 45 to both sides and then divide both sides by nine. Okay, any questions on these um, solving for variables, lots of other variables floating around? All right, well, let's go ahead and take a break <clears throat> and we'll come back at 10 o'clock. And OJ, do you wanna stay and talk to me now or do you wanna wait till after class? Okay, I'll share my screen. <clears throat> and we're working on the last section for this week, writing expressions and equations. And then we can do a Kahoot to kind of review a little bit, okay? All right, so writing a one-step expression for a real-world equation. <clears throat> This is where we're really trying to make that connection between why we're even using letters to begin with, right? So often students ask, why, why do we do this? Why do I need this for anything? And it's so useful. Um, even in my personal life, I probably use algebraic thinking literally every single day. So let's see, Keith had B dollars to begin with. He just spent $20. Using B, write an expression for the number of dollars he has left. Okay, so he starts with B dollars. And 
and he spent 20. So he starts with B dollars. And if he spends 20, that means you subtract 20, right? And this is an expression for how much money he has left. Does that make sense? So, you know, again, this kind of reasoning and thinking, you know, I think we all kind of do this every day, really. Let's see how Alex explains it. Keith has less money after he spent some. So we subtract the number of dollars he spent, right? Now, unlike with addition where the order doesn't matter, if you add two numbers, it doesn't matter which number you add first. When you subtract, it does make a difference, right? Here you start with B and you subtract 20. We don't start with 20 and subtract B, right? So that property, is called the commutative property. Addition is commutative. It works both ways. Um, so for example, you know, two plus three equals three plus two. It doesn't matter which order. That's the commutative property. Subtraction is not commutative. That's the commutative property of addition. All right. See another one. So many windows here. Um, Raphael has a bookcase with six shelves, there are C books on each shelf. Using C, write an expression for the total number of books. Okay, so you can kind of visualize there are six shelves. Three, four, five, Six. Right, and then you've got books on each shelf. It's not bad, right? And we don't know exactly how many, but there are C of them. You know, there are C of them. And there are C of them here also. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are C of them. There are C here, there are C here, there are C here, and there are C here. So if you were to add them all up, you'd have C plus C plus C plus C plus C plus C. There are six groups of C or six times C. Does that make sense? Six groups of C. Any feedback? <laughs> is, this, is this clear or what questions do you have? This is one of the approaches to really understanding multiplication. Right, you have six groups of C. Okay, thanks, Adrian. <laughs> Sometimes I just really feel like I'm in my own little island over here. All right. So. Um, the quotient of x and nine. So a quotient refers to division. And, you know, again, some of these, they actually give you the answer right on the problem page, but there's still more explanation if you click on the explanation or, yeah, I think that's what it shows on your side too. You know, they show 
some key words that generally indicate a particular operation. It's not always because, you know, language can be really subtle, but usually if you see words like sum or increased by or whatever, that refers to addition, difference, decreased by, et cetera, refers to its subtraction, a product, is using multiplication or times or twice is two times something, et cetera. A quotient is division. Um, okay, this is a good um, clarification here to be careful not to confuse is less than with simply less than. Right, so if you have a statement eight is less than N, then you would write it using that inequality symbol, eight is less than N. Whereas eight less than N means you have eight less. So that means you're subtracting eight, right? Eight less. And similarly with more than eight more than N, and eight is more than N. Those two are different statements. See, do they give all of them? I don't know, just some of them. That's weird, the quotient. So X less than five. Okay, so you start with five and it's X less than that. <clears throat> Right, five minus X is X less than five. Okay, I'll let you guys do one. Well, they, <laughs> they already give you this one. Twice Y, that means two times Y. And they show different ways of writing that multiplication, right? Two dot Y, two in parentheses et cetera, et cetera. But most commonly we just write 2y. All right, how about this, c more than six? Yep, c more than six, you're adding c to the six. All right, and then two steps, stretch this out this way, 73, and then decreased by twice Jose, uh, Jose's age. And they want you to use the variable J to represent Jose's age. So decreased by, you start with 73, and then you're gonna subtract 2j, okay? Some number and it's decreased by something. That means you're subtracting something. All right, how about this one? Anybody taking a stab? Yep, the product of eight and a number n is eight n, and then three more than that means you add three, okay? And notice this is equivalent to what Adrian wrote. But really, technically, you know, get it in the exact order that they wrote it, we would write it as 8n plus 3. My guess is Alex would accept 3 plus 8n also, just because they're equivalent. All right, how about this? 54 less than twice Craig savings.
Okay, so twice Craig's savings would be 2C. And that's less 54, right? 54 less than that. So you're going to subtract the 54. Okay. And then there are also equations. So those were expressions, remember, without the equal sign. But now whenever you see an is, that's generally going to translate right into that equal sign. So 17 more than Jose's score is equal to 58, right? 17 more than so you're going to add 17 to Jose's score, J, and that equals 58. Okay. Now, again, I want to really encourage you guys to make sure you're super comfortable with these because as we move along, there will be, you know, more complex word problems where you need to set up equations given a situation. So this is just starting off with some pretty basic ones. Five more than the product of a number, C, and six, and then equals is literally exactly the equals, right? So the product of a number and six, 6C, and then five more than that, you add five. Okay. All right, so let us play Kahoot. Um, Changed on me. Let me see. Stand by. Um, So I'll copy the direct link down here. So go ahead and log in, click the link. You can scan the QR code or you can go to kahoot.it and enter that game pin. You can use whatever name you want. You don't have to use your real name. Okay, again, I put the direct link in the chat. So if you open the chat, you can just click that link. Okay, we got three. Come on, you guys. Still waiting for everyone to click the link in the chat.
Don't be shy. You can make up any nickname you want. Why not, IJ, I wonder? You can just go there and enter the game pin if you want to the kahoot.it. Um, if you click the link, it ought to take you directly into it. So it it automatically enters the game pin and all you got to do is enter a nickname and go. Okay. Any other takers? We only got four players out of 11. Is anybody else trying to get in? All right, we got another one. Anyone else? All right, we got six people. I'll give one more minute, okay? And then we'll start. I should probably start this way in advance next time, right? <laughs> Just to give everybody a chance to maybe get another device or whatever. Okay, last call and we will start. All right, I'm starting. Here we go. All right, nine times the number of pencils, that's nine with a P right next to it, because that's how we indicate multiplication, a nine P. All right. And of course, more points are awarded based on time, how fast you do it.
All right. So remember to evaluate, right? That means to find the value or the number. And we have an expression a plus five. And for a equals 13, you just put 13 in for a. <clears throat> and you do get 18. Okay. So we got three correct answers. Laura has a firm lead. OJ is moving up. Got 20 seconds left. All right, nine fewer than M. That means you're subtracting nine. So remember the order of subtraction matters. I see most of you hit um, the nine minus M. But if there's nine fewer people, right? That means you're subtracting nine. Okay. Laura's on fire. All right, so this is another evaluate, right? Seven times the cost of a book plus $2 for shipping. So you put five in for B, multiply that by seven, do the multiplication first, and then 35 plus two gives you 37. And we're talking about dollars. Okay. All right. Next one. All right, good. So three times a number is going to be three N. And then six more than that means you add the six. Okay, six more means to add six. And three times the number is three N. All right, another evaluation. 
So to find the value when n is eight, you're gonna put eight right in there, and that's multiplied by nine, and then plus four. Nine times eight is 72, plus four gives you 76. Okay. We just barely edged you out, Laura. All right, good. So there are two ways you could say this, m fewer than eight or m less than eight, right? Good. Laura went back up, it's neck and neck. And here, I really wish they said evaluate. But okay, solve the problem maybe. All right, so we want to just make sure we do the order of operations and do inside the parentheses first. So 9.6 minus 2.3 is 7.3, and then add 3.1 and you get 10.4. Tweez back in the lead. All right, so we want to do inside the parentheses first, and we get nine. Then we can do the exponent. And then we can do that multiplication, which is 63. And plus nine is 72. And everybody got that one.
don't know if the skip will just move us past because everybody's answered. Let's try it. Okay. <laughs> so five cubed means five times five times five, right? Three times five times five is 25 times five is 125. So the cube, that means to multiply three times. Multiply it by itself three times, not five times three. Okay. All right, good. So inside the parentheses first, you get 11.7, and then you're gonna multiply that times three. So three times 11 is 33, and then three times 0.7 is 2.1. <clears throat> so that's 35.1. It's easier to do it that way. Three times the 11 and then three times the 0.7. Okay. Okay, so all four who played got it. Um, we want to do inside the brackets and inside the innermost parentheses. We have 20 times one and a half. So one times 20 is 20 plus a half of 20 is 10. So that's 30. 30 divided by 10 is three. Three times seven is 21. So good.
All right, so eight cubed is eight times eight times eight. You know, eight times eight is 64 times eight without even getting a calculator out. I mean, really that's the only possible answer, right? <laughs> so one of those test taking strategies, I guess you could do that. But eight times eight times eight is five four. All right. Yeah, I, I, you know, I can understand you guys choosing parentheses there because really you're doing what's inside the parentheses. <laughs> Laura, I know, right? <laughs> Reading the question is good. That's, it's so tempting, I know. So anyways, <clears throat> I didn't create this Kahoot. Um, you know, I would have chosen at least both of those as the correct answer. Apologies on that. All right, last one. All right, good. Seven fewer than 15 times K. So that means to subtract seven. So still a couple of issues with the, you know, the order of the subtraction, I think. Um, or maybe you feel pressure with the timer and the music playing, I don't know. But, um, <laughs> right, I know, it's, it's easy to do that. So, you know, I don't care that you can do it that quickly um, as long as you really do understand and you can, you know, um, figure out how to write an expression using fewer than. <clears throat> so, you know, if I said there were seven fewer students in the class than there were to begin with because students dropped, right, that means I would subtract seven from the original number of students. All right, so let's see who won. Twee, well done, Laura in close second place and well done to KG2 for getting on the podium. And thanks to you all for playing. Um, Hopefully it's a little bit of fun mixed in with just kind of reviewing a lot of the topics we've looked at and keeping you, you know, kind of up with some of the previous stuff also. So, all right, that is it for this week. Remember Friday, there's no Zoom. Monday, there's no Zoom. So I will see you all a week from today. And OJ, if you want to stay and we can chat, but for the rest of you, that's it. I hope you have a great weekend. Please do reach out to me if I can be of any help.